than you have. Mm. But that was just interesting that you bring that up and I'm sitting listening. Mm. The second thing that I was arrested in Birmingham, Alabama in 1954. This is 54. I just calculated that's 60 years ago. And I was arrested because there were three white kids. I was coming, we went down to Mexico to a work camp. So it was three white kids and myself. And they stopped us. We went in the car. We went in to a filling station to have the car fixed. And none of us were from the South. They were from New York, California. I was from Chicago. So we didn't really, really understand and so we pulled into this filling station, and there were squad cars sitting there. And so when I got out of the car, they kind of looked, but they didn't say anything. And so after the car got repaired, the tire was repaired, and we started down the road. And then these police cars, <laughs> and so they told the white kids, I was sitting in the front seat. The person who was driving was the son of the violinist, Yasha Heifetz. And so they said, well, put her in the back seat. Why is she in the front seat? She. Why is she in the front seat? And so, no, they weren't going to put me in the back seat. So they said, well, you'll all get into the squad car together and go, you know, to the police station. But that was a very frightening experience, and they finally let us go and said, you know, we're going to call all along the way and let them know that you people are coming. I mean, it was like talking to Martians or talking to people from out of space. But final story, I live on 16th Street, a white school built a school playground next to my home. I have been fighting them for five years. They were supposed to block the noise from the playground, which they refused to do. And I said, this is just, and I said, well, why is this happening to me at this point in my life to have to fight with these people that really want my house? It's the only house they don't own on the block. And so this has been a terrible war, and the court just ruled, dismissed the case, but the problem still exists. And I have said to myself, this is to remind me of the destruction of racism and white supremacy even at this time. Wow. Final point, you say that you can't wrap your mind around why they would do such a thing. And I just want to say to everybody, Racism, white supremacy, necessitates genocide. Mm -hmm. This is what Ebola is on the continent of Africa. That's right. You see, we can't understand, but the desperateness, the desperation for white genetic survival is what is producing Ebola, it produced HIV before that, and before that, the Tuskegee syphilis. Mm -hmm.